The Morrigan appears in a variety of different stories and myths in Ireland. Looking at these appearances and what the Morrigan does in each of them can be enormously helpful in trying to understand who the Morrigan was and is. It is beyond the scope of this video to make an exhaustive study of all of her stories, but we will try to offer the most significant for you to consider. It is also beyond this video to fully retell each story, so the focus will be on the portions featuring the different Morrigans. We strongly encourage people to read the stories for themselves. The Morrigan, Bibe and Machla appear in both the first and second Kaf Moitulid stories. The first battle of the Moitulid is the story of the Tuae de Danon coming to Ireland and fighting for the land with the Firbolg, the primordial beings who were already there. The second battle of the Moitulid is the tale of the Tuae de Danon fighting against the Fomorians, chthonic beings who they share Ireland with. In both stories, the war goddesses have important roles in defending their people. In the first battle of the Moitulid, we initially see the three Morrigans when the battle with the Firbolg is about to be waged. We are told it was then that Baib and Machla and Morrigan went to the knoll of the taking of the hostages and to the hill of the summoning of the hosts at Tara and sent forth magic showers of sorcery and compact clouds of mist and a furious rain of fire with a downpour of red blood from the air of the warriors' heads. And they allowed the Firbolg neither rest nor stay for three days and three nights. The magic of the three sisters is potent and the Firbolg are embarrassed that their own magic workers seem so powerless in contrast. Later, during the first round of combat, the Firbolg poet, seeing the slaughter, declares that the Red Bible will thank them for the battle combatants I look on. When the next battle occurs, a list of nobles of the Tuae de Danon who go to the front of the fight is given, and with it, we are told that Morrigan, Bibe, Makla, and Danon accompanied them. Similarly, on the fourth day of battle, the three Morrigans, as well as their sisters, the sovereignty goddesses, Eru, Fula, and Bamba, and their foster mothers, Danon and Behule, accompanying the warriors. In this battle, the goddesses set up pillars behind their own army so that the warriors could not retreat and must fight. Eventually, the Tuae de Danon triumphs, although their king Nurda loses his arm during the fighting. In the second battle of the Moitulid, the Morrigan appears to Lu to urge him to rise up and fight against the Fomorians who are oppressing the Tuae de Danon. It is this appearance which seems to set in motion the actual war between the two powers. On Samhain, the Morrigan met with the Deidda and they united before she promised to aid the Tuae de Danon in the Kaf Moitulid. We are told that a year before the battle, the Deirdre had arranged to meet the Morrigan near Samhain time. He found her straddling a river, washing with her hair hanging in nine sections. One foot was on the south shore and one on the north shore. He talked to her and they joined together, after which the site was called the bed of the couple. After having sex with him, the Morrigan tells the Deirdre to gather the skilled gods together and she will meet them near the river. She promises to go to one of the Fomorian kings, Indech, and to take from him the blood of his heart and the kidneys of his valour. When the hosts of the Tuae de Danon meet up with her later, she gives them two handfuls of blood as a symbol of her destruction of the king, and that is the place called Ford of Destruction afterwards. Although Indach is not killed then, he does die in the following battle, suggesting that her act may have been magical, with the blood representing her taking of his courage and strength, enabling him to be defeated in combat. When the armies of the Tuae de Danon have gathered and Lu asks her what she will contribute to the fight, she replies, Not hard to say, I have stood fast. I shall pursue what was watched, I will be able to kill, I will be able to destroy those who might be subdued. In the battle itself, we learn that Machla and Nurda both fall together at the hands of the Fomorian king, Balor, 
Machla is the only female name listed in the recounting of the warriors who died in the battle. And because of the context in which her name is given, it is entirely logical to assume she died fighting alongside her husband. As to the Morrigan herself, it was said, Then the Morrigu, daughter of Unmas, came and heartened the two Edir to fight the battle fiercely and fervently. Therefore, the battle became a rout and the Fomorians were beaten back to the sea. After the victory of the two Edidanan, Baib is asked to give the news and she recites a prophecy which tells of the fate of the world, both good and bad, to come. The main story of the Ulster Cycle is the Toynbo Kolak, the story of the war between two Irish provinces, Connacht and Ulster, over two great bulls who are actually enchanted cow herds that have assumed many shapes over different lifetimes. The primary characters of this time are the hero Cúchollan and the queen of Connacht, Maeve. Although the story is an epic which covers many years and includes a multitude of other minor characters, including Cúchollan's charioteer and Maeve's husband, in a prequel to the main story, Baib and Morugu, and we see Nemanja and Baynade as well. No relationship in Irish mythology may be more complicated than that of the Mulligan and the epic hero Cúchollan. Some people feel that their relationship is an antagonistic one, with the Morrigan setting herself against him and ultimately causing his death. Others feel that she loved him or otherwise favoured him and that her actions were designed to increase his glory as a warrior. Best-selling author Morgan Daimler who provided the script for this very video. Their opinion is in the middle. They think that the Morrigan engineered the event of the Time Bowl Conle for her own reasons, and she needed Ku Holland as a part of it, and her relationship with him seems largely ambivalent. Her main focus seems to be on the war itself, and she is undeniably its cause. While she clearly favours Ulster, and for that matter, the brown bull who she had bred to her own cow in the Time Bowl Lagavna, she often seems to contend against Ku Holland and make his path more difficult. At one point in the time, it is only the intercession of Lu and his Sai warriors who intervene and protect and heal Ku Holland that prevents his death. Read more with her books, The Morrigan and Raven Queen available right now in a beautiful hardback collector's edition. As a prelude to the entire time, it is important to understand that the events occur because of the curse Machla lays on the men of Ulster. This curse lays low the warriors of Ulster when they are in great need, but does not affect Ku Holland, either because of his youth or because his father is the god Lu. This means that when the armies of Connacht attack, the only one who can defend Ulster is Ku Holland alone. Had Machla's curse not been on the warriors, the entire story would have gone much differently. Ku Holland first encounters the Morrigan in the story of the Time Bow Lagadma. After hearing a cow crying out in distress, he searches for the source of the noise and finds a very strange sight. A one-legged horse hitched to a chariot by a pole, transfixing its body with a red-haired, red-cloaked woman in the chariot and a man driving a cow alongside. Ku Holland tries to speak to the man, challenging their right to the cow, but the woman answers him, responding that it is none of his business. As the encounter goes on with the woman frustrating the hero with her answers, he eventually leaps onto the woman's shoulders, threatening her with his spear. She tells him she is a satirist, a type of poet, and recites a poem for him. He leaps down and throws his spear at her, only to find all have vanished and the woman has become a raven perched in a nearby tree. Recognising her as the Morrigan, he says that if he had known it was her from the beginning, the encounter would have gone much differently. To which she replies that he will suffer for what he has done. He tells her she has no power over him, and she replies that she does indeed, and then tells him that she is guarding his death and will continue to do so. She then incites him to battle, telling him that the cow is hers, and that she has taken it out of the sight of Kulchen and to breed it with the bull of Kulchen which will lead to the time bow Kulchen. She also says that he shall die when the cow's unborn calf is a yearling. 
he welcomes the battle as something that will increase his glory and fame, denying that he will die in the conflict, and she promises to hinder him in three different forms, as an eel tying his feet, as a wolf biting him, and as an otherworldly cow leading a host of cows against him. To each threat he replies that he shall overcome her, and she will not be healed without his blessing. The two part ways, and the Morrigan returns to the caves of Kulkun. The Morrigan initially appears in the Tainbolkunla itself, sitting, either in the form of a woman or crow, on a stone pillar near the brown bull, the Don of Kunya, who is pastured with his 50 heffiers. She speaks to the bull, warning him of the coming cattle raid, so that he moves his herd. This is the second time we know of that she has interacted with the bull, the first being alluded to in the previous Time Bull Ragavna. We first see Bai when she appears to Queen Maeve in a dream and incites her to avenge her son, who has been killed. This is reminiscent of the way that the Morrigan appeared to Lu in the second battle of the Moy Tuid and incited Lu to fight, or the way that she appeared to Kuholan in the Time Bull Ragavna and incited him to battle during the future Time Bull Kunya. Inciting warriors to battle is a significant theme for the Morrigan. When next Kuholan and the Morrigan meet, she appears to him in the guise of a beautiful young woman, offering him victory if he will sleep with her. He refuses, saying that he has come for battle, not for a woman's body. She later appears while he is fighting as a wolf, eel and heffier, and each time causing him to be injured, but is dealt three blows by the hero, which he promises he will never agree to heal. She then appears to him as an old woman, with a three-teated dairy cow, and offers him milk from the cow. After each drink, he blesses her, healing one of her wounds. It may seem odd to us that Ku Holland was so easily lured by a simple offer of milk. But we should remember that the early Irish were a heavily dairy based culture. Early Ireland used a wider range of dairy products than most other contemporary cultures, and milk was especially enjoyed in a variety of forms. The offer of fresh milk to a man in the middle of fighting a war was a great temptation indeed, and the story's audience would have understood why he so easily agreed to drink and bless the woman offering it to him. After the third blessing, when she was completely healed, she reminded him that he had said he would never offer his blessing, and he replied that if he had known it was her, he would not have. Later in the story, Ku Holland raises a great shout upon seeing the army gathered to fight him, and Nemanja appears, shrieking, along with a multitude of dangerous spirits. Her voice is so terrifying that 100 warriors fall dead at hearing it. Golomonvich Epstein suggests that, in the Time Bowl Coolidge, Bibe often appears around Ku Holland when he is fighting because of several places where the hero references the great noise she makes around him. Nmanye then appears again over the opposing army, this time at night, causing confusion and terror, and in some versions, bringing prophetic dreams. The final time we see the Morrigan in this time is when she appears to both armies, chanting a poem to incite them to battle. She promises both sides victory, apparently genuinely prophesying it to Ulster, but tricking the other army by encouraging the warriors to a fight where they are doomed to lose. It is also possible that her poem was not a prophecy at all, but a straightforward incitement to battle. A practice among the early Irish called Liadid, included in the Ulster Cycle, which the time Bokulia belongs to, is the death of Gu Holland. This story also features the Morrigan in several ways. Before the final battle in which the hero will be killed, the Morrigan appears and breaks his chariot to try keep him from fighting, although he seems to perceive it as either a challenge by her or an ill omen. On the morning of the battle, his horse, the Grey of Makla refuses to be harnessed and then cries tears of blood, presaging his death. In some versions of the tale, he sees Bibe as a washer at the ford as he goes to battle and knows she is washing his own bloody battle gear, an omen of his death. 
During the battle itself, the Grey of Makla fights fiercely, even after being mortally wounded to defend Ku Holland. When the hero is finally wounded to the point of dying, he ties himself to a pillar so that he might remain on his feet and his enemies are so fearful of him that they dare not approach to see if he has died until the story says that. And then came the battle goddess Morugul and her sisters in the form of skulled crows and sat on his shoulder. Only when this happens and they are certain he has died do they come forward to claim their trophy. And with this, the Morrigan's promise from the Time Bowl Ragavna comes to pass, as she did indeed guard his death. We are simply scratching the surface with this video. And if you want to go far deeper, then please take a look at our book, The Morrigan and Raven Goddess by Morgan Daimler, who also provided the words and information for this video. We've just released a beautiful hardback collector's edition featuring both books in one tone. Available from Moonbooks, grab your copy now. Thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to our members. You too can also become a member by clicking that little join button. Subscribe for weekly videos, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.